interview and job search strategies at work. In the last couple episodes, well, permanently, actually, in the first episode, we talked about typical job, go from a call center job to a help desk job, and so on and so forth. We're going to assume now that you've taken the steps to go from McDonald's to a call center job. You've applied, you've been on training, you're in your two weeks of training, you have lots of nice skills, you've gained the soft skills that comes with being a call center uh, technician. Awesome, now you're ready to become a help desk person. You're ready for that next step. You've applied, what do you need? What certifications do you need to get that position? Well, it could help you. You, you typically actually don't need certifications. You just need knowledge. Active Directory knowledge, primarily. If you know Active Directory, how to create users and groups, how to create permissions, then you're good. That's pretty much what you need. If you want to take it one step further and spend, I want to say it's $150 for each exam. I think it's what it is. So you're looking at like 150 times three, 450 bucks, but roughly, to get the Active Directory certification. And I'll tell you what that is. It's a Microsoft cert. The It's a MCSA, so that's a Microsoft Certified Solution Arc Associate, and a Windows Server 2016. And those are three certifications. They are 70-740, 70 70-741, and 70-742. 70-740 covers the installation and the configuration of the Windows Server 2016 software. Setting it up, creating... Uh, acted, rather creating an admin account on it. When you you install Server 2016, you're gonna you're gonna create users like local users basically, and that's just the server level. That's just standing up a server, no big deal, right? That's just like installing an OS essentially. There's more to it than that, but that's basically the point of it. How to do that? And then the other one is 741. That is networking with uh, Windows. Server 2016. That's how to set up your DNS. That's how to set up your, your DHCP server. And in, in server, you can do that. And that's how to implement your, your Hyper-V uh, SDN. So that's the Software Defined Network. So you can create an actual network within a server under your Hyper-V network, essentially. And then finally, your 742. So the... 742 is primarily focused on Active Directory and domain services. So setting up Active Directory, setting up uh, Active Directory uh, certificate services, creating user accounts, creating permissions for those users. This is what I tell people. This is why I'm Ethron. I tell them whenever you start this journey and you have a help desk job, continue on, learn more. But if you're in call center, Learn this. Go to Udemy. Go to Google. Learn Active Directory. Google, what is this What is this thing called Active Directory? I know I hit on it before. Let me take it a little step further. Have an Excel spreadsheet or open office. You can open office free. And in the Excel spreadsheet, put down your host names. Put Write down, for instance, you might want to say Texas. So each server can have to 15 characters. So I would say, here's how I recommend breaking that down. So T-E-X-A, that's four. Then D-A-L, that's Dallas. D-A-L. Then, what is it? So that's seven. Now you have eight more. So you might want to put S-R-V-R, so that's server. And then you might want to put A-D-0-1. So what are you left with? You're left with Texas, Dallas, server, A-D-0-1. You just you know, break it down into 15 characters, essentially. What, why is that important? Why, do you, why are you asking me to do that for? What's the reason? Here's the reason. You pretend in your training environment that you have a bunch of servers. You might have five servers, let's say, right? And you want to pretend each of those servers is in loca- a different location, an Active Directory location. You can set up AD in five different areas. You, you typically don't have that many Active Directory servers uh, in a role environment. You probably have like three or four, um, but you can you can do five 
You know, they could be anything, really. You can, in place of AD, you can put file server, FS01. It's up to you. But I like to tell them to put that, write those servers name down, write the IP addresses down, and write down what domain it's, it's on when you create it. That way, in real world, real world practice, that's what they do. They have a list of inventory of all these servers because you could be looking at, say, 20,000 servers or a list of, the, you know, the whoever pulls a list from SCCM or whatever of, oh, all these are servers, bam. And you're like, I have no idea where they're at. <laughs> I have no clue. Well, you'll know this because based on their name. That's, that's the whole idea behind naming them that way because you'll know where they're at. Secondly, stand up, rather, secondly, in your Excel spreadsheet, another sheet perhaps, create a bunch of users. Family members, friends, etc. Maybe 10, 20 users. Create a bunch of users and give them different permissions. Put them in different member of containers. Maybe create a different container. Maybe create a container, I'm, I'm sorry, a member of group essentially for only Texas or whatever area that server is in. And add those users to that area. And then you're able to identify you're able to simulate problems essentially. So when you when you do help desk in your real world scenario, you're going to have a bunch of people calling you, a bunch of different um, problems. Take those problems and just simulate them in your your at home environment, basically your home lab environment, so that you understand. Oh, okay, that's what it's. Get to the point where you, you know you can break it. You can solve the problem quicker and faster. And, and whenever you do that, you're just going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to get more, you're going to get, oh, you're going to, what you want to, what you want to do is this. You want to have the aha moment. You want to have like, wow, I did it. I figured it out. Awesome. You know, that's what you want to get to. That's everything really. When you can get to that point where you're like, I figured it out. You know, I, I did it on my own. You know, I had that aha moment. You, you want to, you, you want to get to, you want to fail fast essentially. But you want to get to the aha moment, like, I did it. I know I keep reiterating that, but that's really the case. Whenever you get to that that feeling that, I, I did it, you know, that's their confidence building. You got it. You, you got that win. You got that, that small win. Whenever I, I think I, I didn't really go over this in the first one, but the first episode, but whenever you're getting out and, it, you know, some people may feel like, oh, IT is so, such this, uh, this, this giant thing and like, you know, it's, it's really not truth be told. It's really not. And if someone around you says, Oh, you can't get this job, right? Like you can't get a job because you don't have a certificate or rather you don't have a degree, you know, or whatever the scenario is, whatever they tell you, just say, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And don't seek their advice again because any, anybody that is an IT Everybody, the people you want to hang around with, the people you want to take, take advice from, are the people trying to help you. They want to help me out, help me get better. Because in IT, we we don't want we don't someone we don't want someone who doesn't doesn't share knowledge, someone who just like holds it in is a stingy butt. We don't want that. We don't want those type of people here. I mean, they exist. Believe that. You know, there are people. I th- I told you in the first one. They just stick around and just and just take a chair. They're taking up a chair, taking up a seat, essentially taking up a a slot from the company. They're good workers. They do what's expected of them, but they're not looking to improve. You know, and I've seen it time and time again. How many people I've seen that they're just content, dude. They're just fine. Hey, I'm here. I'm fine. And hey, that's on them. No big deal. But my point is, if you, if your goal is to do that then just do that. But if your goal is to get better and better and better, people around you are going to gravitate to you. And maybe you could even form like your own little powwow, basically, you know, where maybe you go home and you talk about ideas with people at work and you just learn. Or if you're not getting it there, there's plenty of communities out there. And if you're not getting it from there, create a YouTube channel, teach people what you know. And you're going to get instant feedback because you're probably looking for some sort of um, recognition or some sort of like, good job, good job. 
Sometimes you won't get it, but sometimes you will. And if you know, the more you create, the more content you create, the the more feedback you're going to get, the more you're probably going to do uh, better in the field. And also, if you do all those things, like for instance, you create a YouTube channel. When you go to your next interview for sysadmin, <laughs> you can always reference to say, "I have a I have a YouTube channel. I teach others about this." You're what you're doing is you're telling them your 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 uh, serv- your credentials. I validated my credentials because I have a YouTube channel. I know what I'm talking about. That's what it says to them essentially. You know that those two people who are in the in the interview, you being one of them, the other person being doesn't have a YouTube channel, doesn't have maybe a GitHub site, doesn't have the doesn't do the extra things that that you do. Well, you're going to get the job every time. You know, I mean, given that all the skills are the same, you're going to get the job every time. Because what you're exhibiting is personality. You're exhibiting like a figure, you know, the best thing you can do for yourself in the job, IT job, if you don't know, is say, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> because I, I, it's not over till I win. I'm, I'm going to get it. You know, you take take it as a personal, as personal satisfaction, as like a challenge, a personal challenge. Like no one else did this, but I'm going to figure it out. You know, <laughs> I know it sounds a little egotistical, and maybe you hold that to your own. You know, when you're out there, but in your back of your mind, you say, "I'm just going to figure this out." And the the more you know, you the more you share your knowledge, and the more you try to include other people, you're going to just feed ideas off one another, and then you're going to get really, really excited and like, oh, awesome, you know, and we're having an awesome time. So, yeah, take take that take some of that advice uh, into consideration. Um, I appreciate everybody taking time to view this law, uh, view this podcast, listen to the podcast, and and we'll see you later. Thanks, bye.